Come on, big straps. We got another walk around to do on a D4. It's early 7U. It's a 1950. We have 7U9360. Now, this is a wide stance tractor. But these were not distinguished as wide stance tractors like the earlier models. The narrow tractors were the 6U, which is right there, and we'll get to that later. We got big stripes out here, acted as Vanna White, showcasing everything quite nicely. This is a very complete tractor. Also a side tank model, just like our 4G, just like the 5T that we just took a look at. And yeah, these... Flimsy fenders were still on these tractors on the early 7Us. Side tank models were often used more for drawbar tractors. Of these tractors that we brought home, this one still has a shim under the drawbar. And this one's showing a little bit more wear than the rest of them. The tank is relatively clean, not bad shape. And I just absolutely love these old fuel caps. And when I was working in Antarctica, the 950s that we have down there use the same exact style of fuel cap. Yeah, they've been updated. This is an original one, uh, but these fine threads are very prone to get cross-threaded. Got the dipstick in here, the screen's still in here. Side tank is not in terrible shape. What really made this tractor unique is this style of dozer. It's more reminiscent of the newer style dozers that have the hydraulic cylinders attached up here on the front. Of course, these are way too light to attach that to. And really, there's only a spring under the front of this. So mounting it to the track frame was the strongest position to mount them. We did not get the blade for it, but no harm, no foul. Dad and I are more into the tractor aspect of it and not necessarily the dozer. The newer style radiator was introduced on the 7Us as opposed to over here on this 5T. This has the more square front, the different radiator cap. The new 7Us, 6Us went to a whole different style. Now this one was equipped for lights. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have them. This is a LaPlante choke blade, just like on the 5T over here. Uh, but this is entirely a different concept. And again, this might have been in the transition years when Caterpillar started making their own blades, like are on the newer 7Us, 6Us. The hour meter, I have not even looked at, so let's clean it off. Nearest I can tell, this hour meter looks like it says 2892, which it's probably rolled over, so it's probably 12,892. I've noticed on some of the newer 6 and 7 U's, they've actually switched to a five digit service meter. This one is indeed equipped with the generator system. And this is the different style than on the earlier 5T, 4G, 7J series tractors because it has a whole separate flange that bolts on this uh, intermediate front cover and the front cover for a generator. That does look like something that started in these older 5T machines. Lower radiator tank has been brazed, welded, cracked, and repaired on this machine. And that's not entirely uncommon. There's a lot of stuff hanging on here. This pump hanging up here. And that is why the dozer designs of this area all came off the track frames. This one has no oil, appears no water. The pony motor has excessive amounts of in play but it is free so that is always a good sign and always possibility of being rebuilt the early 7Us do carry a lot of resemblance to the earlier tractors but they change drastically over the time frame we have pretty crummy looking oil in the transmission may have got some water in that Unlike our newer, our 1952 Toolbar 7UD4 in the shop, this one does not have quite as much wear. And a lot of this stuff is still free. Steering clutches, this one's kind of froze up. This one's still free. Not a lot of spring left in this step. Very sticky. Main clutch, still kicks in and out. Brakes, working and free. 
not too bad so definitely a candidate for some work as usual the gauges are in up and at least they're present looks like this one did come with the remnants of a light for the front be very cool to get a set of those and put on one of these machines gear selector pretty much frozen can't get that thing to wiggle or budge i believe sometime in the 7u time frame they did change to the two-piece top covers and this is an early one i do not believe this tractor has that quite yet substantial wear on the brake pedals especially the right one this operator favored the right brake over the left. The hood has a few minor dings and dimples in it, but overall not in terrible shape. And love the old generator and the Bosch regulator up there above. Something that I noticed on these later model tractors is the embossed raised logo on the side of the engine block that says Caterpillar. Now that was something that was present on the earlier D2s, I do believe but not on the earlier D4s, which is kind of a dead giveaway that you have a D4400 engine like the one on this 5T. And the radiator's dry, nothing in there. Hydraulic tank, everything's incorporated here. It really got to a point, it seems to me, that on a lot of these machines, they just kept stacking stuff on the fenders toolboxes, fuel tanks, batteries, hydraulic reservoirs, uh, levers, systems. It really got crowded up here around the operator. On all of these machines, I can really, really appreciate the design and the experimentation in all of the dozer mounting systems. Now, what was beautiful about this one is it relieved all of the other stuff back here that the operator had to climb over to get into the operator's seat. All you had down here was the dozer arm that attached back there, and that actually provided a nice step for the operator. As opposed to this system on this 5T that had hydraulic cylinders up here at the top, attached in the back, and you know what I was talking about earlier, all the stuff that they would put on the fenders? Well, this is a prime example of that mess. This operator might have been long-legged like me. They've got this shimmed up with some one-inch pieces of wood. And they've been in there a while, they got moss growing on them. Having spent so many decades as an operator, I can really appreciate some of the subtleties in here. Like that obvious wear pattern where it's wore the paint clear off right there where somebody's knee was riding up against it. Wiring for these battery boxes were, it almost looks like an afterthought the way they ran it around here next to the pedals and you were stepping on it and let's just hope you didn't wear it through and short it out on the metal everything's metal interesting to note you can still see the remnants of the old d4 logo underneath the paint job on the back of the seat who doesn't love a treasure hunt i absolutely love it and for some reason one of the things i look forward most to getting one of these old tractors is going through what's left of the toolbox now the 6u and the later 7u that are the tanks that are on the seat have the toolbox underneath the seat and that one's got nothing left in it we'll go through that one but i think there's some things in here i haven't really went through it yet i absolutely love these toolboxes they are a work of art in their own there we go Ooh, goodies i love getting in the toolbox and looking around it really tells a story looks like we got some brackets i don't know what those are some sort of cleat there's a cat part number on them. I'll have to look that up. And another one, 6F8890. I can't tell. Oh, look at this. That's interesting. A cap. I wonder if we're going to find a rod in here. Steering clutch spring. There's a bearing for that cap on the end of that rod. Definitely looks like it's spun in there. That's kind of interesting. Oh yeah. You know what? I don't know that that goes to that. Man, yeah, that's it. That goes there. Let's see what else we got. Oh, the basil for the light. Keep that. Another drop pin. A bunch of very useful cat bolts. 
and these are cat bolts. So dad and I are keeping all of these we can find. Spark plugs for the pony motor. Uh, bolt, brand new looking bolt for a cutting edge on a blade. What else we got? Cap. Sham. Bunch and that fancy thing. Oh, look! That's for at the end of the day. One of those little bitty fine thread plugs. Gonna need that. All this stuff's gonna come in hand handy. That's a uh, fold over lock for something. Bushing. Quite an interesting bunch of stuff in here. A Oh, that's the breezer off the side of a carburetor. The TU4C, I believe. Oh, this is a master pin for the tracks. And this one's worn out quite a bit as well. There is a lot of stuff in here. I think everything that broke on this machine, the piece got stuck in this toolbox. Looks like a piece of three-quarter bar stock for something. Uh, spring, I guess. A bushing. Another bolt for a cutting edge. That one's uh, got the P. A lot more cat bolts. Pipe. Very cool. Now, uh, looks like these are the prizes out of that toolbox. I'm going to take these in. We'll keep them inside as mementos. And I'm going to shine this up on the grinder and see if there's a brand on it. This tractor has the D315 engine with the electric start. Magneto switch still works. Choke, throttle, there's pros. Pinions, that's a free. This is free. That's free. Not great tracks on this machine. Now, the Grousers aren't terrible. I think they've been rebuilt at one point in time. You can kind of see the welding on here. A little bit of sprue. Yeah, a lot of undercarriage wear on this one. Those sprockets, eh, they might be the worst ones I've seen. They're pretty getting down there. Just noticed a very interesting, I think this is somebody's attempt at a master pin, welding the cap on there to hold it in. So yeah, no, not good. And the rollers on top aren't bad. They're, they're serviceable. I'm guessing that these pins have been, no, they have not been turned. That's kind of surprising considering the amount of wear on these chains. The other side, virtually the same. Chains, sprockets, pins have not been turned. Uh, this has a little bit more wear and grooves in it. Rollers, not terrible. They, they've definitely seen better days, but they're still serviceable. I do not seem to see any repairs on the track frames. That was a popular thing, especially on dozers. Didn't have them on the other one either. Interesting to note that these grousers have also been cut out. You can tell a Colorado machine. They're worried about snow getting in there and throwing the track off. So that was a common thing folks did with, got the old cutting torch out. Engine is a matching engine block number. This head does appear to have been replaced. We've noticed that this uh, kind of primer color on here is indicative of that. We've actually encountered this on a couple other machines. And by checking the numerical code, we could tell they were replacement heads. The one on our 7J that we're putting, actually we're using the original 4G head, but the 7J motor had a replacement head. Looks to me like something attempted to poke through the side of this block down here. You can see right there, it's kind of pushed out. So this engine may have had a problem. In fact, I would wager to bet that this has something to do with that bearing cap that we found in the toolbox. Is the engine free? Well, the water pump is, but the engine is not. I have not been able to get this to turn. I don't know what it is, but when I see carnage like that on the side of an engine, I really want to take it apart and see what went wrong. Is it a candidate for a rebuild? I don't think so. I do find it interesting that this being an early 7U, it still carried over a lot of things from the earlier generations of D4s that definitely changed when we get to that one.
Well, there you have it. The matching numbers D4 parts machine dozer that has a lot of stories to tell. I do want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. I just love these old toolboxes. Let's clean this thing up. I think we're missing a number on the wrench, but it's a B8056, which is like an axle, an elbow, and a gasket, which I know is not right, but something's missing right here. Still, that's a really cool memento. But the real prize is definitely this can opener slash bottle opener. And I cannot make out the name on it. It's too rust pitted. But yeah, this one, this one's going in here for later. For opening up paint cans of Caterpillar Highway Yellow. And honestly, most of these old tractors and trucks and things had these in there. For open up cans of oil. So not not uncommon. What were you thinking?